Environmentalism is supposed to be about protecting the environment, and most people are completely in favor of that. But the environmental movement of today has nothing to do with protecting the environment. They're destroying the environment, killing the California condor with their wind projects and whales and basically wrecking Africa with all the elements needed for their new battery revolution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not about the environment. It's some kind of weird cult around climate. And who better to assess a cult than Jordan Peterson, who is a famous psychologist and author. We asked him about what is happening recently. Here's the conversation that resulted. Jordan Peterson, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it, it just, just to begin with the premise that the modern environmental movement doesn't seem to be doing a lot for the actual environment, it's my observation, what do you think that's about? Well, I think the best example of that's probably both Sri Lanka and Germany. I mean, Sri Lanka is an absolute wasteland at the moment as a direct consequence of idiot, hypothetically environmentalist policies. And then in Germany, energy is much more expensive than it was. It's much more unreliable than it was. The Germans are dangerously dependent on dictators and the Russians. And uh, that's all a consequence of hypothetical environmentalist policies. So even by the standards laid down by the environmentalists themselves, the policies that were put in place that were pro-environmental are failing. But there's something that's even um, deeper lying underneath the surface. Um, Alex Epstein has made a fair bit of this in his new book, Fossil Future, but I started delving into this, I guess, 30 years ago when I wrote my first book, Maps of Meaning. So, Tucker, it's become pretty clear recently as a consequence of converging evidence from a lot of different disciplines, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and literary criticism, uh, odd bedfellows, by the way, and there's more uh, scientific and humanities endeavors involved in this convergence than those, that the structure through which we see the world is essentially a narrative, is a story. Yes. And so, um, and in fact, I asked the world's greatest neuroscientist about a month ago on my podcast, Carl Friston, if even our object perceptions were micro stories. And he said that that was clearly the case. And he's speaking as a scientist, by the way. And so that begs a question. If we see the world through a story, what should that, what is that story and what should it be? And what are the fundamental elements that the story has to contain? And so the environmentalists offer us a story to live by, and it's a, a, a pseudo-religious story, and it essentially elevates the biosphere, the earth, Gaia, um, the earth goddess, let's say, to the status of primary deity and characterizes her as sort of a waif-like, innocent victim, easily taken advantage of and fragile. It casts the entire human endeavor on the social front as a raping and pillaging patriarchal monster only interested in power. And it casts the individual as like a, a, a devouring mouth riding on the back of that giant, essentially. And so that's a description of the world. And there's some truth to that, right? Because we can wreak environmental havoc. Yes. Social structures can become power mad and we can be um, carelessly consumerist, but it's a very incomplete story. It, it, it demonizes in a very pathological manner. So when you hear people say things like, human beings are nothing but a cancer on the face of the planet, or there's too many people for the, on the planet for the earth to, to feed, let's say, then you're seeing reflections of that underlying pseudo-religious narrative, and it's extraordinarily dangerous. Now, the reason that you can see that in some ways it's a religious structure rather than a than a, 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 what, what you, a careful attempt to gramp, grapple with the full realities of the world is that it has these odd features. So, for example, the environmentalists tend to radically oppose nuclear power and also natural gas. And it's clearly the case that there's nothing that reduces carbon production more effectively than nuclear power. That's, yeah. I don't think anybody with any yeah. sense ever debates that. And it's also clearly the case that if we were careful with nuclear power, and we could be because we've been building nuclear plants for a long time, that we could be providing extremely low cost energy to people, especially poor people throughout the world. But we, we are not going to do that. In fact, we have an anti-energy policy in place, especially in any places that are ruled essentially by the left. And the consequence of that is, uh, well, I just 
saw today, UNICEF just released a report showing that there's been a 25% increase in the last year and a half in the number of women and children that are starving around the world. It's a direct consequence of the increase in energy prices, which are in themselves a direct consequence of anti-industrial policies put in place by hypothetically well-meaning, deluded, pseudo-religious, environmental worshippers of the apocalypse. It's, it's an appalling situation, and it's, <laughs> it's likely to get worse, I would say, before it gets better. Not cheery, but probably true. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.